Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to talk about operators and conditional statements within Stylus. Now, these have great use in functions. It makes sense to just add a little bit more of customization to what you're doing already. So maybe it's not perhaps taking a value and just spitting out something, but it's actually taking a value and intelligently able to uh, change what is being displayed based on that value that the mixinner function is receiving. So check it out. We're going to get into those right now. So conditionals can be really useful within stylish mixins. Let's say we want to have a mixin that accepts an argument, and if the argument is true, it's going to output one thing, and if the argument is false, it's going to output something else. Well, we can use if statements and else if and else statements to actually uh, define what's going to be output from our mixin. So let's go to a, a mixin and let's just name it test. This is going to be testing a variable. Okay, now we can say if var, uh, and this if this uh, equates to true, it's going to execute and return the properties below. So uh, if var is true, then it's going to let's say output background red. Now if the variable is false. We want it to output background blue, so we could say else. Uh, I don't know why it's just trying to autocomplete, but we can say background blue. So what this mixin is saying is whatever the value of this variable is, it's going to determine what gets output. So now in our CSS, if we go in here and we can pass in a, a mix in here and we can say test, and let's give it a value of true, simply like that. You can see that our background is being output to red. Okay, so let's come to our mixin, and just like we said, if the variable is true, the background's going to be red. Now, likewise, if we pass in false, like so, we're getting blue as the value that's being returned. Now, there are all sorts of ways that you can use conditionals in your mixins to do other things. Now, let's say we have a value, and based on what that value is, is going to determine what's output. So for this test mixin, let's pass it a value of 10. So within our mixin, uh, we can now say if variable is greater than five, then the background will be red. Otherwise, make the background blue. So as you can see, once I save that, our background's now red, our variable's 10, uh, however, if we were to say uh, if the variable is greater than 10, then make the background otherwise blue, it's now blue. So these if statements are working in very much the way you'd be used to in any sort of programming language, and they can do some really powerful stuff. So let's say we want this to actually output that this test mixin is going to be assigning uh, a margin top of uh, I'm going to use the unit pre built in function here, and we can say unit, and it's accepting the var and then giving it a unit of pixels. Okay? So, no matter what, uh, whatever variable we're going to pass in here is going to be set as the margin top. You can see that's output right here as margin top 10 pixels. However, we want to say if the variable is greater than 10, we also want the margin bottom to be set. So we can say margin bottom is also going to be unit var and pix. Okay? And if it's not greater than 10, we just want nothing. Okay? Let me add some space in here below here. Cool, so what this mixin is now saying is if our variable that's getting passed in here is greater than 10, uh, then we also wanted to have a margin bottom. Otherwise, don't worry about the margin bottom, just give it a margin top. So let's come in here and you can see we're saving this and we're just getting a margin top. But the moment we go to 11, uh, we're also getting the margin bottom. So as you can see, these conditional statements can be really super useful in building out sort of interesting functionality. 
Now there's just too many possibilities to go over in this video, but once you have a basic idea of that you uh, can write if statements that are checking values, uh, uh, they can do comparative, they can do greater than, less than, uh, your world sort of opens up as to what you can do with these things. Now, what sort of operators do you have the ability to use? So let's check out the stylus documentation page. And as you can see, we can use these operators. We can use is equal to, is not equal to, uh, is, is not, isn't, in, less than or equal to. Uh, we can use plus minus, we can multiply it, is defined, all sorts of stuff here. And uh, there's even some nice words like not, if, unless, and you can see here what they're going to equate to. So not zero equals true, not not zero equals false, not one equals false, not not five pixels equals true, negative five pixels equals negative five pixels, negative negative five pixels equals five, and so on. So I think it's worth taking the time to go through these examples and check out the operator section of the stylus documentation to really see what kind of cool stuff you can do with these operators. And there's, I mean, there's even the range, which is giving you both inclusive and exclusive ranges. So Stylus just offers so many great uh, features built in that you can build some extremely complex functions. Now, complex functions creatively used can create some really, really interesting packages. So I would suggest experimenting with conditional statements in your mixins and functions and throughout your CSS and see what kind of cool stuff you can come up with and then share with the community. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.